too cute. Turned out really, really great. So happy with it. Just love it. If this is your first time here, I would love for you to subscribe because this channel is all about creativity and inspiration. I hope you feel inspired to create something amazing. Feel free to share the inspiration because life is a journey we make together. And now I will show you how this adorable quilt was made. I love making baby blankets and I love the color pink. So this is gonna be so fun. I'm gonna put this on the back so soft and i love the chenille it it is so fun to work with you can just outline the flowers if you want in the clouds i'm going to do in white i'm going to put pink all the way around oh this is going to be so fun can't wait so let's get started i really like to use the chenille to outline flowers and these clouds because it just Oh, so easy and it's, it's just really easy to work with. Just keep it, your needle in the middle of the chenille it. Just work your fabric, turning it as you need to. I don't even pen this. So I've done round one on my clouds. And you know, it is so fun and so cool. Um, I decided that it'd be really great if I chenilled that. And I only had a little bit more, so I ordered some more. So I ended up getting a different brand, but this would be a great way to see a comparison. So I'm working on one of my sheep here. And you can see that I'm trying not to sew right on top of another piece of chenille that I've already placed down. So I kind of try to move it out of the way. It's a lot of, you know, going around in circles. I wouldn't work with more than a yard at a time because it's a little cumbersome if you're gonna go around and around, but it's very doable. I think I like the swirly. I'm not sure how that's gonna turn out, but I think it will be nice. I have a little helper today. I'm still working on my sheep and he's turning out so cute. Oh my gosh. It has taken me a little bit of time though. And I'm not sure if the, if doing the whirlies is really gonna make a difference, but I'm going for it. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out, on the dritz it, it said to put two pieces on top of each other, which I, didn't do last time and I didn't do this time either. So I just do the seam in the middle and then I kind of butt it up against each other and then put another other seam in on the other side. So I think that this will give sufficient enough fluff. Well, I gotta say, it's just turned out so cute and I haven't washed it yet and that's when the magic really happens but look at that oh my gosh so this is without it being washed so I put the pink all the way around it can't wait to see that I think I'm gonna do some flowers by hand and then put them on the machine and what I also might do is wash this panel before I put the back on so if I need to do any more, like add another top of the pink, I still can do that. So I'm gonna wash it right now. And one thing that I'm gonna point out is sometimes the bias tape, they have to splice it. So I didn't know if it should go up or down. So this one's up, this one's down. 
Let's see if there's any difference at all. Gotta say, it is so cute. Look at that, look at the clouds. Oh my gosh, the sheep, fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. So I'm super happy that I washed it first because there's a couple areas that I do want to address. There's a seam that I need to fix, but so happy to fix it now, right? So, before I put it together. And I'm waiting for the white gauze fabric so that I can put a ruffle on the edge. So cute. And to address a couple of the questions, which way to put the, um, the bias tape up or down, it doesn't matter. It, I, I, I figured it just didn't matter. So one tip that I do have is find yourself something that has a point. I've used a pen before, but this really is a little bit more useful because it can, you know, just get the sides out of the way so that I don't sew. I can kind of use it to guide the bias tape. So I want to use up the last little piece of bias tape that I have. So I'm just kind of looking here and seeing where I want to place it. And that if you hold it up to the light, you can really kind of see some blank areas that you, just your fabric is showing. So that's where I am going to target next. My crazy dog. You're a crazy dog. Just finishing up. So I love how this curved corner turned out. It's just so cute. So I've squared up the top and I've made my rounded corners and now I've just placed it on my backing, pinned it so I can cut it out the exact size before I put the white double gauze ruffle on it. So that way I can sew the gauze to the top and then put the back on. So I bought my double cotton gauze from a store on Etsy. I only bought a half yard and it was a very generous half yard. So thank you very much and I will list the Etsy shop in the description below. And since I do have a little extra of the cotton gauze, what I've decided to do is six inch strips. So this way that I can have, you know, fold it in half. So that's three inches, a half inch seam allowance and this has not been washed so it will crinkle and shrink a little bit but I think that would be a nice ruffle. Now they say don't wash your gauze when you get it. Wash it later. So and then it kind of the lines come up, kind of come out and it kind of puckers. I sewed it end to end. I didn't do a diagonal seam because I wanted as much of the fabric as I could get. And I just did a little running stitch with some pearl cotton to kind of make my ruffle. And then I could kind of pin it where I wanted it. And I think this is gonna work great. So it did take me a couple of tries to get the ruffle exactly how I wanted it and evenly distributed on the panel. And my only tip would be that work in sections. So when you put the running stitch in, do it in four different sections and make sure that you have like six to eight inches of free 
whatever you're using. I used pearl cotton and this was a string that I had just to demonstrate that so you could see it a little better that I had to put in another section. So I put in three, I definitely put in four work in quarters and then you can kind of pull it as you need it and that'll work great. So this was six inch strips of the double cotton, so 24 inches. And for this one panel, let's measure. So roughly 34 inches wide, 41 inches in length, and I like that ruffle. That's, that's just distributed nicely. So now I'm gonna put it on to the front with a quarter inch seam. So I've sewed the ruffle in. Got my backing on, right sides together. I'm gonna pin this all the way around. Leave yourself an opening, because you're gonna have to turn it inside out. So I've marked it by two pins where I wanna stop sewing. Probably 12 inches, 14 inches opening. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna move my needle over to like a half inch. And that way I can run another seam all the way around and make sure that that gauze is secure. So I love the big reveal. I flipped it inside out and it's just as cute as can be. So the next step is to just hand sew the seam in. Not a big deal. It's about 12 inches. And then I'm going to put a top seam with a little bit more of the chenille. It'll be so cute. I love how the baby blanket turned out. It is just super cute. It was super easy to make. Love the chenille it. Just gives it that extra punch flowers are so cute. How fuzzy. The sheep are adorable. I embroidered the bee. It was just super fun to make. Loved the double cotton gauze ruffle. That was so fun to make. I was waiting on a project to do that. And the final measurement for the ruffle was like about two and a quarter. That was the six inch strip, that was a half inch seam, and then it shrunk down to a two and a quarter inches, and I think that's great. It just is super ruffly, and it's just did exactly what I wanted it to do. I'm just super happy. Love the chenille it. I think I like it a little better than the dritz it. This seems to be a little thinner, and after I washed it, some of the thread did come off. So I'm not quite so happy with that. So my vote is the chenille it. Just love it. Go chenille it! Happy sewing!